So we're going to start looking at the resource management strategies that were all pulled out of the 2013 California Water Plan. Um, so um, the DWR guidelines direct um, the into um, IRWM's um, regions to consider and um, document the uh, resource management strategies that are identified in the California Water Plan. Um, so that is. You really want to have that link um, when it comes to project prioritization and when we talk about what the DWR preferences are, you'll see that you know those links um, and how we make them um, can be really beneficial um, in the funding realm. Um, possibly it will also just make us have a stronger plan. Um, a resource management strategy is a, it's a technique, a program, or a policy that helps local entities manage their water and related sources. So I'm going to as we, when we get to the matrix here, um, where we go through the actual resource management strategies, I'll show you the structure, but there's actually places where DWR has guidelines about what that resource management strategy is, but the ways in which we use it, they have some examples, but we can change those. So, and it won't be something we do today, but just so you know, those are not set in stone, that we will adapt it to our region. Um, California Water Plan, of course, is good for the whole state, and there's some very unique issues that we may have up here that we are allowed, you know, that can be inclusive, but we will, you know, want to put it within the um, structure of the resource management strategies. Um, and again, so why we need to address them is to help meet those water-related goals and objectives of the statewide and regional uh, water plans. And as I mentioned earlier, the steering group did direct the work groups to do this. At one time, we thought the steering group would do it, the steering group would do it, but they want the work groups to. And this will be um, the main piece of information that the chairperson will take to the January 28th steering committee meeting will be a list of these resource management strategies that we identified that you want to work on today. So. So the um, resource management um, strategy objectives, um, there's seven objectives that they've defined and um, you do have this information in your, in your packets. Um, it's, and uh, I believe it's in the stakeholder involvement. Uh, what is it left here? Uh, I can find it. Page one of twelve. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, so it gives you a little bit of a summary of the video. Anyway, they've divided. Um, they identified seven objectives, um, and within those objectives, there'll be some subcategories. Did everybody find the page? Page 12. 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 Page so those um, objectives are to reduce water demand, improve flood management, improve operational efficiency and transfers, increase water supply, improve water quality, practice resource stewardship, and then I believe um, that people in water was not in the um, earlier requirements for um, our water plan, but it is now part of the Prop 84, um, or I mean the new water plan, the new California water plan, was, that was a new um, area that was added to people in water. That includes everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, So 
So the, the, um, what we're going to do now then is identify those resource management strategies that apply to this work group. Um, you can be as broad as you want initially. You're not held to anything today, obviously. Um, the, other, the only other work group has met so far actually, I think, doubled the number of resource management strategies that they thought were relevant. They just wanted to keep their options open. And they also found some connections that other people didn't. So that's the nice benefit of having a lot of people who see connections that um, may not you know, be recognized by others. So it's OK to be all inclusive at this point. You are not committing yourself absolutely to work on all of those. But it does give you that base of, of areas that you feel are important. And, and you will end up at the next meeting prioritizing or we can help you or, or work together to prioritize um, those resource management strategies once we've identified them. So does there have to be more work done on those different RMSs? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to hopefully weed that list down. There's about 30 of them, so you've got not all of them are going to be applicable to this group. And or hopefully you don't find <laughs> a lot of work for yourself if you find a connection on all those groups. But, um, but um, yeah, then we'll reduce that. And then we'll continue to, um, well, let me get to them. So, so just I guess trying to just clarify what are we committing ourselves to when we put something so today, when you identify one of those 30 resource management strategies and you say, I want to work on, you know, we're going to work on this. All you're saying is that we, there's a possibility that the projects that you're going to work on, might, might, there might be some interest in having projects in those resource management strategies, um, but you are not, you're going to refine that list basically as you go along. So you, today, whatever you say is just saying this is what we're interested in, but we're not, we're not committed to doing it at this point. So that's where the chair takes over. And <laughs> that's okay. Um, you guys all have it in your pocket. We're going to go through this the old-fashioned way. Huh? You can come that. I'll just do this. Um, Sir, would you entertain? Do you want to buy me a new laptop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, Jeff. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I'm just trying to think about how to wade through this list. I, oh, I, just one by one is what the other group did. And, oh. and basically what we're going to do, so you can see the way the list is. Does most people have a copy of it? Um, yeah, in your packet. In your, it's in your packet. Yeah, it's page two or twelve. Um, stars. Yeah, stars. So you have your resource management strategy identified there, and um, that is something that is identified in the California Water Plan, so that's not something we change. Um, as well as the definition of that resource management strategy. So those first two columns are things that are defined in the California Water Plan. They're not things that we will be changing. We'll just be saying, do we want to work, have that resource management strategy, something that this work group wants to work on and address? We see projects that are going to be tied to that resource management strategy. Over there, uh, the third column over gives you examples of possible approaches. And that's where we have some flexibility as we move along. It's giving you some examples. You do not have to address all the things in that list. Um, you can add things to that list. So we'll be taking some things off that are not applicable in some of these uh, resource management strategies. So that list is just purely there for an example. And today we won't be addressing that list or changing it. Um, we're just going to identify the resource management strategies. And then in the fourth column, what UMA is starting to provide is a direct link to the California Water Plan in that section in that chapter for your reference so that you can go in and see what and how that's identified. Again, I don't know if many of you have read any parts of the California Water Plan, but when you read it, it's obvious that there's a lot of parts of it that don't, again, quite cover what we do up in this area. And so there is that's our opportunity in our regional plan here is to then address those things that are important to our region and make the connection to the water plan. So is that so, a link more related to the definition or the overarching? I so the link is actually the chapter in the California Water Plan, so the 2013 California Water Plan, which was just finalized recently. That link would take you, um, and that water plan is also on the website under documents. You have the entire plan. But it shows you the chapters, and so this just links the chapters 
for you electronically so that you can just um, go there. So there'll be a whole, it's just a single chapter of the water plan that relates to that resource management strategy. And again, part of, I'm sorry, Dan, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so if we look at number one, we just all agree that that is something we want to do. And that could number be, two, right, that's exactly what we're doing today. So just three, keeping it simple yeah. for today is just looking at those and, and agreeing by consensus that. Yeah. Do we, do we raise our hand? Well, you know what, what the other group did is it, I'll just we'll, I'll go through them, and then if there's any objections, then we'll you know talk about it. But if there are no objections and everybody agrees, we'll just move on to the next one. And so we'll say yeah, your name. Sounds good. So, um, resource management strategy number one: um, agricultural water use efficiency. Yes. Yes. Important. Feel like that's important that this group wants to. Okay. Uh, Chair. Yes. In. Uh, in the interest of being, uh, well, I, I want to say that I, I think that that's not something that this group, would, because there is a, there's another work group that specifically is, that is specifically would, would, would agree, would work on that. Hey, Jeff, though, what I'm thinking is, you know, if we're focusing on meadows, and ways to improve meadow conditions that have ag going on. It seems like there's a direct nexus there for for improving so, conditions for both producers and for meadow conditions. Can we just say joint then? It is, yeah, and they overlap. And it might be that ag takes um, Jeff. The ag would take it on as their primary one of their primary resource management strategies. For us, it might be something that is not as critical, but there will definitely be some links. That is, as you're saying, there may be some links. <laughs> well, I, I, so I, I kind of consider ag, ag water use being uh, private property, and the meadows and the water bodies and rest uh, that this group would be in, involved in would be uh, non-private or public. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're saying that you don't think that the meadows group can pertain to any private land? Uh, There's private meadows all around, most of them, right? Yeah, but that, there, there is a work group that it, I mean, I was thinking that this group was more in, well, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of how to be, actually get something done. And I think right. if every group takes the whole list and says, yeah, we want to be involved in that, there's going to be so much overlap and so much, you know, I, I think that's why we have different groups is to is to uh, try to narrow it down a little bit so that the different groups can rather than everybody be involved there they all think we're going to get anything better. I think we should go through the list quickly yeah. to see how many we end up with. Just so if you have a question mark, and we have 20 of them, then I think we should go back and put this down. Is that your suggestion, Mike? Yeah. Okay, we, we can do an all put a question mark on that because there may be some we totally mix out to. So, um, Joe? Yeah, and I hear, Jeff, I, I was just thinking the same thing. We don't want to, I can see everybody would think, okay, so yeah, we, that's important to me that, you know, that every subgroup ends up with 25 to work on. Um, but I heard Terry say that it could be that the eggs would take the lead, the egg group would take the lead, and then, and, but we would be involved. You know, so yeah, okay, so I agree too. That's, that's three, three, we'll see what we got. So, number one is a question mark. So, number one is a question mark. We now have, thanks to Randy's question plus. It, it seems to me the two we don't really, if, if you look at the question. examples of possible approaches, it's nothing really that we would be involved in for, water. for two, urban water. Right. Does everybody agree that uh, number yes. two is probably out for Okay. And I can see agriculture having some relationship to us and floodplains, mm -hmm. but urban efficiency I don't think we should be working on. <laughs> Right, and you don't have to yeah worry if we don't cover it. Don't worry about who else is going to. There may be even RMSs that we nobody covers up here in Prince County because they just aren't relevant. So it's it's okay for it to be without a home. Um, so just focus on yeah what is going to be of interest to this group. So flood management number three. Yes. 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 Four is no. Number four. <laughs> 
Is everybody thinking about four? Oh, no. 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 Just because of the geographical. <laughs> or the biggest yes in the world. Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> okay. So uh, the, uh, I guess we're going to Again, I would say that I would I would disagree that five would be a yes. I can think of two, I can think of spots in a lot of places where the crossings under highways are too narrow, and by widening them, it would include the meadow upstream. So I think it would be a yes. yes. That's five. You're saying that's part of five? Yeah. Question mark. Well, I don't know even a question mark is, I mean, if, if we're dealing with fisheries, then we're certainly, we believe, Trout Unlimited believes that five is an, real important if we address it. I mean, fish passage is really important to us. Is everybody okay if I put Joe? Yeah. Um, it, it sounds like a municipal thing. It's, it's water, water conveyance, right? Mm -hmm. Terry, could well, you but if you look at the example, some of the examples that um, could you maybe redefine what the work group focus is that, as floodplains and meadows, or is there some definition of what that is? Um, yes, there is. It's on the website. But um, oh, and we could go to that um, definition. But it's really what you guys are defining today. Those the things that I threw up earlier were just. What we, what the man or the consulting group kind of came up and said, oh, these would probably be the main interest. But in terms of these resource management strategies today, this is really your baby to figure out like what this group wants to take on. Um, so I think if we just do this, um, like you said, kind of quick, of, um, quick approach to to this, then we can maybe you'll get a sense for what the overall picture is, and then maybe. Pick 10 or 12 or however many. Right, because I think but there's some people in the room who feel strongly about certain things and not about others, but if somebody in the group right. feels strongly about it, then we have, we're keeping it in at this stage of the game. Well, it is going to be by, it, it is by consensus. So, it, you know, if just one person says, I want it, and the rest of the group is saying no, then I you know, think that we may want to yes. think that. Yeah, I feel process. strongly that five is a yes. Okay. Conveyance capacity, I think of all the places where we have tiny people. Uh, I think it's the screen angle, but because it's this. Yeah, it's a little knob in the front of the lens. If you can that, this yeah. Knob. It seems we could go there through this go. list, and there's going to be things that come up clearly as like everyone agreed to. Yeah. And there's some that don't. Let's go through it quickly. That's just what I do. Put question marks next to the ones there is some disagreement on, and then get to the whole thing. So I definitely want a question mark on five. Okay. okay. Randy, watch the screen. Oh, it was pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. I can't see it. Terry, we'll keep it track. I am, yes, I am. Of course. It's part of my dog. Keep track of you guys. So, number six, system reoperation. No. Well, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Say it again, Terry. Uh, resource management um, strategy number six, six uh, system reoperation. I'm hearing no from several of the group. Is that any yeses? Any yeses? <laughs> the reasons why we think we should keep that one in. The only one would be that Lake Almanor, and there's obviously stuff coming down the pipe right now about how that system is going to be operated, and if we are water bodies, that's all I'm saying. It's a possibility, I think. Oh, reoperation with the reoperation of Lake Almanor. Is up for grabs right now. Probably it, decided to put the screen. It should probably right. be included right. if it's laid out. What did you just say about the? Well, this is about system reoperation, and right now there's a there's a uh, yeah. EIR out that's talking about reoperating Lake Almanor. Yeah. It would have significant impacts on the rest. So, is Lake without Lake Almanor be considered a water facility? Water body, right? It's it's a water, water body. body. Well, yeah, I know that this group's interested in water bodies. I'm pretty good at. The improvements of existing operations and management procedures of water facilities to need to need to. Yeah, that might I, be the outtake of pipes. Yeah. 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 That's, that's tied in with the 401 
water quality certification, the EIR came out. There's a copy on it. I don't know if that's anything this group could do anything about. That's all. I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just saying maybe put a question mark and maybe come back. We're going too quickly. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. About water transfers, number seven. What about the Round Valley? Not the Round Valley. What about Round Valley? I'm just curious. Would that have any? According to our lawyers, no. Okay. As our water bodies group. Okay, so what's the answer? Yes or no? No. Number eight. Number eight, this is a conjunctive management you were asking about before. Sounds like a medical operation. All you say yes is clear. There's an interface there. I mean, in the meadows are where you're storing some of that water. I would say yes on eight. Yes on eight? I would say yes on eight. We're on the same page, Jeff. Wow. Anybody taking notes? I am. Your facilitator's taking notes. And it's all being videotaped. They wanted to be on number eight. Yeah, that's what I was going to get into the cloud seeding business in this county. Is that something we should be looking at? We should be looking at it. It's a concern. It's a major concern. It's a major concern. Well, I know. We've had quite a few meetings on that, and the presentation went almost national. So you're voting that this is should be a cloud seeding? It's a question. It's a 10, yes. Municipal recycled water, number 11. What about here in American Valley with the wastewater being used on fields? Is that something we consider? Is that a point of relevance? Is that your all right, surface storage, number 12. Why do you think it's a yes? What caught my eye was storage facilities to improve ecosystem functions and conditions. You can see why the municipal group checked a lot of yeses, and they'll be refined down the line. So as far as we know, none of those five sites are in. They're not. They're not. So here, let's drop it. Do I have a consensus? Drop it. Okay. Surface water storage regional local. Do any of us know of any proposed projects here in the basin? Um, related to water. We do know that at one time DWR had, I think it's in a, an old planning document we looked at, John, at the planning commission. It shows virtually all the valleys and reservoirs <laughs> at one point. Uh, but, you know, viability of a new storage facility up here like that. Not that much private property that's really available. You just go into the forestry. Yeah. Um, I, I think that just, just because of that, no, I'm, I'm a yes on that. Oh, you're a yes on that one? Okay. 
Because it doesn't say it has to be for public. Can we just do that also on private ground? 13 question mark. On this point, when you look at the existing IRWM on the website, you'll see a listing of existing reservoirs in the region and who owns them and how big they are. And it is part of the background material on the existing IRWM that we're updating. It's in the existing IRWM that Terry held up earlier. The 2005. The 2005. It's got a listing of all the reservoirs and who owns them and the size. The very definition of above ground reservoirs, I mean, we're talking about water bodies here, and I'm not just talking about existing, and I know how silly it sounds to suggest that maybe there might be a new one in the future, a water body reservoir, but I think that we should not completely discount that possibility. Yes for the question mark. Yeah, I think that's a question mark. Question mark for sure. Let's come back to it. Okay. How about number 14, drinking water treatment and distribution? I think so. No. By the way, that list gives the capacity and the height of the year the reservoir was constructed. The groundwater remediation, aquifer remediation, number 15. Do we have any issues like that? No. Well, again, I'm not thinking, maybe I'm looking at this all wrong, I'm not necessarily thinking of what we have what right now, but what we may have in the future, the opportunity to be a part of. And, again, I'm kind of counteracting myself or contradicting myself, but this whole idea of now that I know what conjunctive management means, I'm not saying questions. I really think this is important because as the lakes get warmer, we are beginning to see more algae form in the lake. Where is the algae coming from? Is it coming from the bottom of the lake, or is it coming down from the streams, the tributaries, and so on? I think this number 15, if I'm reading this correctly, yeah, number 15. Let's do question mark. Question mark, maybe, because 17 might address what you're looking at. Well, then, they don't know about this as well as anybody. I think they need to look at that. And it might get covered in 17 as we go down, you'll see, because this one seems to be more chemical-oriented, toxic chemicals. We have one that's a non-toxic one in a couple of our messages. So I'll just put a question mark on that one right now. Matching water quality to use, number 16. We're going to talk a lot about the water temperature and how it relates to the whole thermal curve controversy. Question mark on 16. Question mark on 16. Number 17, pollution prevention. I think that's a yes. Yes. 18 probably looks like a no. ago, we had that terrific runoff up in our end of the county that we finally had to call the county out, Tom Hunter and his crew, because of the terrific amount of runoff that was coming off the golf courses and so on, onto the main areas of transportation, and what problems that those created. So I don't think we should overlook it. It may not be a major problem, but it's something we ought to keep. Agreed. 19 question mark. I'm sorry. I said agreed. 19 question mark. Yeah, and I'm also thinking of the county yard. There's runoffs from the county municipal yard over there on Mill Creek off of Highway 70. 
it's all kinds of issues of runoff, and it's like if the county could get funding to improve the layout there, that would be a big plus for that watershed. Well, and you've got an example of the runoff from Quincy, just the streets and roads all over our town. I don't think that's really a question mark in my mind. I think that's something we are going to address. Because we have problems with it. That's a big issue in Northern Governor Basin, for sure, with water quality. Great. Can you do that to a yes, then? Yeah. What is the danger in including something now? At this point, no. nothing. This is really a brainstorming, get stuff okay. out there. I think what you're not you're not going to want to end up doing is adding ones later. And I think that's what Municipal's approach was, that work group. They took on like 20, 20 out of the 30. Um, but recognizing that they're probably going to drop them off. You're going to prioritize these as you, you know, as you begin to see what your projects and where those kind of fit in. It may, you may just find they drop out some of them. So, but, but, find another group is, is and another group, when we do an integration, we might find out that their projects, so again, I, you know, I would say be all inclusive, but not ridiculously inclusive at this point, um, because these discussions are going to keep coming up as you go back to this, but, um, but I think what you, you won't really want to do and won't be really productive for the group is to try to go back and revisit these. Once we've decided which ones, then I'm going to call out that, you know, at least get rid of the things we know this group doesn't want to work with. I want we to can continue to prioritize. Yeah, them. I agree with Terry. You know, start big and then it'll shrink. But on, on 19, oh, um, just a little editorial, the Cal, or US EPA and the Army Corps is looking at uh, Clarifying the uh, Waters of the United States rule, uh, and um, the the issue that uh, there's a very good letter written by uh, NACO, National Associations of Counties, RCRC's written one, the county's written one, um, uh, CSAC's written one, but it could capture roadside ditches. Because you have a navigable stream, and those, if those ditches get run off into a navigable stream, and the, the Feather River would probably qualify for that, and it kind of runs back up. And Congress is kind of not liking the definition they came up with, but it is something that is uh, should be on your radar screen. Well, some of these things that we're looking at too, we may not address them in real depth, but like we did on ASWAC, there's certain topics that we put in our plan that we're keeping an eye on to make sure somebody does something about it. Not necessarily that we're going to try to control it or anything like that, but make sure it gets taken care of. Keep it elevated. Right. And yeah, we have things in our plan. That, that the other thing is, is this is your first exposure to these things that are in the California water plan, so you're going, whoa, I want to look at that. So. You know, I think Terry's got it right. Quick question marks, say yes, and then hone them down later as the process goes. Number 20? Number 20 is the agricultural yeah. lens. I say yes. Yeah. 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 Again, I say no because there's a specific work group uh, that that is their specific area. You take so a look, look at, at the third three, column, uh, Jeff, I think, uh, I forget what the title of the third column is, but uh, reading the bullet points, example. stream bank stabilization, buffer strip for riparian areas, and so forth. This group should definitely be involved in yeah. I think you could define all of our, almost all of our private owned meadows in the county as ag land. The grids. So check mark. This is yes. 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 Uh, give me a minute. I, I want to read the, all the third column. And the other thing is, in that third column, we may take one thing out of that third column and use it, and ag may take on all those other five and add some. So don't look at that as like we're all going to be working on the same thing. Those are just examples put in there, and we may take some examples if you feel. And again. 
Some of this may just fall out as the process goes, so don't get too but worried. Yeah. If something, if we say yes when, today, when we, we may not work on it. Meeting, some of this stuff will get dissolved, right? Right. And when there. we start to do projects, I think that's when it really fall out. So saying yes today does not mean that next meeting we keep that RMS. We may drop like it, say, our if projects are really well, focused. This is addressing a lot of private property. <coughs> really, the people may come together and say, if they're going to do a plan and say, this is what we're doing, and we included these, but to directly say you're going to have a say over these is, is kind of infringes on private property. Well, no, Terry? Uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, after reading all of column three, I'm still a no on that. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Just question, question, question mark. Question, question mark. Okay. 21. Yes. So 21, equals to restoration. Well, with all due respect to Jeff, if you look at the definition of consensus in this particular document, having one person say no or having two persons say no in, out of 30 persons would not create a question mark. If 28 say yes and two say no. Okay, but we're just banging through the list. Uh, yeah, I don't think it just means we're coming back at the end of this and we're going to go back through them and make our debates and you can make that statement there, I think. Yeah. Right. Let's, just, let's get an overall view of what all the topics are, and then we'll... 21. Yeah, 21 yeah. is a yes, yeah. and 23. 22? 22. Yes. 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 Uh, 23, land use planning. Now wait, don't, don't we have a forest management group in, in here? Yeah. I think it's yes. the first bullet but point that gets people going there. It's... it's to me, it's an overlap area. You know, when we have these integration meetings, we're going to be spending some time. What's the relationship between Upland Forest and Meadows? That'll be a subject. We'll dig into it. So to me, you know, there's primary areas where everybody's looking to you to do the lead work on it. There's other areas where we know there's going to be overlap. We're going to have these meetings and hash out. There's projects or issues or what that looks like. That's how I'm looking at it right now, but you know, it'll evolve. And for our county, 2021 20, and 22 may all be more, more or less the same things. Right. So 23, what am I? I would say a big yes. yes. Okay. Uh, number 24, recharge area protection. Am I hearing yes on 24? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, Heather. Thank you. I'm still on 23. Okay. Reading all these little things. You guys are. Yeah, I didn't know that we had gone through 23 already. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, that's, we're here to go at the pace you guys want to go. I had 10 yeses and no noes. So I'm a no on 23 as well. <laughs> Give it a minute. Is that something we're going to really influence considering we just have a new general plan? Right, right. And I mean, I was thinking dealt with that. Matt, you don't want to reopen that, do you? Well, the general plan has a water element. Um, yep. So there is a connectedness with this process. Um, the state's actually debating about having water elements as a mandatory element in general plans right now. I'm not sure that will happen. Um, <clears throat> wonder why. Uh, yeah. Um, so it wouldn't be bad to understand sort of where the general plan is for this group in, in terms of land use and how it's dealing with it, but that would be all I'm saying at this point. It's up to you. That's a good point. That's good. What, what number are we on? 23. 23. We're talking about the importance of planning in relation to the Meadows. So it sounds like a question mark. There is some question, so let's come back to it. Okay. Are we ready? Um, is everybody okay with moving to 24? And again, any of these question mark ones will lose it. Um, we'll try to mark 24, please. <laughs> yes, with a question mark on 24. I don't like the detention dams that could much like 24. Um, well, Heather, also know that that wording right there is just an example that's been thrown in. It's not any words that we have. No, that's why I have a question mark. Okay. Mind. So just know those examples are purely okay. examples. Okay. Just but we're more looking at that first column as the state plan, water plan, and verbiage. The first right. and second yeah. columns are the columns we cannot change and are not changing, but we need, you know, we want to tailor it. Yeah, we gave you examples. The bullets are the ones that we Right. The bullets, bullets we can add, add, subtract, take wording out. It's just an example. Yeah. So don't get too hung up thinking that. I, 
if you vote say yes to that, that that's what you're agreeing to, that example. It is purely just as an example. So I put yes, question mark, question mark, question mark. As you're almost at the end, you go the way through, a little over. 25 is sediment management. Yes. 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 Or do you guys want to do it? Sorry, I don't want to. <coughs> We're on the whole sediment debate, so I have a question on that. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I guess well, one of the things, and actually, Sorry, what, no, I, no, 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 RK is a mess. No, no, no. The way Heather actually does phrase that, though, is kind of maybe something to remember as we're talking about these resource management strategies. Is a yes is actually saying there's an issue here that this group wants to address. It's not that we're agreeing to what this example is or how it's going to be done at this point. That's what the project is going to tell us. So right now, saying yes is agreeing that we have an issue here that we agree this group might want to address because, it needs to be, yeah. Yeah, because we need to address it. So in that case, it might be that you know, if we all agree, it doesn't. We're not agreeing on how it's agreeing. It needs to be included. So we, yeah, no equals yeah, yes. If we have a call, it's kind of like with the map. Think back to the map. If you in your head, you already have a map of this county, and it's got little pins all over where you feel there's concerns, whether they're fisheries or erosion, or whether it's public or private land. At this point, we're just doing this brainstorming. Um, those are the things to kind of be thinking about with these. Is again, we're just trying to identify. Not, I'm not trying to identify how we're going to fix them yet. 25 is yet. So, yeah. Does that make sense to you, Heather? Then when you, so having a concern about an issue is a good reason to put it in. Um, 26 is a yes. This seems like yes to me. Absolutely. Anybody object to 26? All right, just a few more to go. 27. Well, John, in, the whole in thing. all due respect, I think that in going through this list, this group's uh, objective should not be to grasp at anything that we could probably possibly apply for a grant for. I think we should try to focus on specifics because there are other groups to focus on other specifics. And if we all, if we're all applying, if we're all involved in each other specific group, then we're all going to be applying for grants for the same thing, and it's just going to make the whole process less and less productive, I believe. So I'm, I'm, I'm a no on 27 as well, but and it's because I think there's other, you know, I think that's more in the municipalities. Uh, work group. I agree with that. I agree. I agree. Yeah, so we just assigned them a task. I don't know. So can you take the idea? They did take it. They, they took like so they, they took So are we going? What? Where are we? So we are number are twenty-seven. We yeah, no, and we just said no. A no. We say no or question mark. Any yeses? No. 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 Yes. No. 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 Loans, but not related to water delivery and and water pricing. The, the, the title should be enough: economic incentives. Uh. <coughs> well, again, so we'll move on to 28. Um, I mean, question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Yep. 
Um, number 28 is outreach um, and engagement. I would think that's one of our primary functions. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a pretty I'm still reading. <laughs> I'm a slow reader, thank you. It's high technology, that's best. 28, I'm hearing a no one. Yes. Yes. Is that yes. Agree? Yes. yes. No, yes. Who's on first? Um, 28 is a no. Oh, oh yes. I'm sorry. We're not going to do outreach. I think 28 is a yes. And it goes, yes. Uh, I think Carrie is probably. Okay. Yeah, I, it was the way yes. I was no. trained. She got no and yes. I got yes written down. Oh. Is that good? 29, water and um, yes. culture. Yes. 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 Yeah. 30, yes. <laughs> Yes. One of the examples we talked about in the municipal group is the culture of having all these green lawns. <laughs> California way. Well, it's American way. You don't use it someone else's way. And then 29, yes? Uh, yes, yes, that's... Well, that's, I've green. heard yes on water and culture, although I didn't hear from everyone, so if we need 30. a couple minutes. And yes on recreation. And yes, on recreation. yes on recreation. Yes on recreation. And then we have one more, 31. <laughs> Fog collection. There's one. And your budget. Well, there's plenty of food over there. Water bag transport. What's 31? 31 is your other strategies. I'm getting ready to put it up there. Whatever we come up with later, we want to add. Is that what it is? That we haven't thought of yet. Yeah, yeah but you know, think about the categories. We probably could fit almost anything in this group. My, I'm just a suggestion. Don't take it from me. But the, you probably and the, the other. Um, you define it loosely enough that it'll fit in one of the other categories. Well, I, yeah, I would guess unless you want to take on it. And I think putting water in large inflatable batter bladders and then opening them around. Well, we throw them down from six Sierra Valley down to Quincy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we already do. We just use a river. Yeah. That's true, too. It's up to you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And then on the next page, there's only one number. I was going to ask the question, and maybe I should keep my mouth closed, but it seems to me that Meadows, et cetera, et cetera, would easily bear on all but two or three of these 31 issues. And I guess I would argue in favor of including as many question marks as you want to have, Jeff, and Heather, and then let's see whether we want to pin them down later. Well, I think that's where we already were. But there is something I want to say in response to that. And I'm trying to keep in mind how to make this whole process work more efficient, more efficiently. And keep in mind that there is a decision-making group that's going to oversee all of us. And everything that we come forward is going to go through a decision-making group. So if we come forward with a decision or a request for a grant or funding for a project that is better suited to be handled by a municipality, you know what I'm trying to say, group, or the forest group, the decision-making group, the steering group, management group, is going to say, I would assume that that is a project for the forest group. Exactly. And I think that's where that type of decision should be made. In the meantime, if we all... Excuse me, one person at a time. Jeff, I don't think we should be closing the door at this level. And I think John... We only have nine no's on the whole list. We only have nine. So we have more than the municipality as far as either yes or no. But again, let's... So why don't we just make the list? No, I think that's what I was trying to say is that we'll keep things in for now, including the question marks. And I'll put that question mark with those when I put this out. And maybe everybody walk away so we're not throwing anything out except the no's. But I think John was arguing that we shouldn't even throw out the no's. Was it not, John? No, it wasn't thrown out. Not necessarily. There may be one or two no's that I would like to see as a question mark. And we did have a couple of those, so I have some no's. The subject that we're going to be treating for the next two years is so broad and so general that that's where all the water begins, in the meadows. Well, it doesn't on my list. Let me say one more thing. I want to keep iterating this. During the integration meetings, a lot of this stuff will be resolved when you have overlapping topics. It will be taken care of. I mean, in organizations I've been involved in the past, a lot of things get dealt with in those integrations. And I'm just going to add in that this is your first exposure to any of these resource management strategies. You've taken, you know, some of them you've embraced instantly. Some of them you have questions. I think what Terry's trying to say is bring them all back and then kind of look at them again next time. Well, you've had some time to kind of look at them and understand them a little bit more. Do that mental examination of how they relate. Let's kind of bring it back. I know probably people are getting hungry. Maybe raise your hand like Ryan if you have something to say and allow each person to say what they want to say. He's a Dodger fan. Because it's a good chance that they might be saying something that will interest them. So, Ryan? Yes, I think one thing when people take these back to look at them is run through the filter of this isn't just do I think that's important. Is this something I want to work on and put effort into to develop funding to make happen on the ground? Are those my priorities? If you have 21 things, you're going to dilute your highest priorities. So, in working in these kind of groups, you have to focus and prioritize. So, I just think of that. It's great to think broad. And maybe there is some pet thing that's like that is John's thing. And you want to develop a group around it. Then we can talk about keeping it in. But if you have 21 things in there, you're going to dilute your efforts. This group has to focus and figure out what they want to get done on the ground. So, be thinking a bigger picture of what is it. You already know kind of what you want to see happen for water management in this watershed. I think that's key to preparing this list. Leah and then Joe and then Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So, uh, you know, another thought is once you start paring these down, what, what Terry's going to be doing is giving you actual verbiage from the California Water Plan so that when you sign up for something, you'll know what the expectation is of DWR for you to start digging into it. And you're, if you're like, no, that's not really what I thought it was. This is what I thought it was, but that's not what the California Water Plan says it is. You'll have another crack at this point. Well, the California Water Plan wants us to do it this way, and we think maybe that's not our interest, and our interest is over in this other category. So I think that'll all start happening, you know, as you dig down through. But once you see the language in the California Water Plan, you know, you only got a sentence, okay? They, there's there's 20 pages on each one of these, or 30 or 40. So she she's going to go through and pull out what what the California Water Plan is expecting. And if that's not the road you want to go down, then you're going to go, no, we're not really that interested in this, and we'll deal it on an overlap if a project comes up or an area that we both think is important, we'll deal with it then, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. So that so this will just start winnowing itself out. So. Don't you know? Don't get too worried if it isn't that clear right now. You'll be darn sick of it by the time it's clear. <laughs> I can promise you that. And Joe, Joe, are you next to Mike? Well, I think the suggestion was made to keep the question marks in there for now, take off the nine zones or whatever, and, and ruminate on it. And uh, I, I agree with that because there's no way we can resolve the question marks. I'm a yes on that. No, we still yeah. I have a few more things. Um, Mike, so did you want to share something? Maybe I'm misunderstanding a little bit, but. I mean, these are strategies, so shouldn't we be looking at these as in, is this a tool that we can use to meet the objectives of this work group? Not, is this something that somebody else should do or it needs to be addressed, maybe we should adopt it, but is it a tool that we can use to meet the objectives of this work group? Yeah, and then Carmichael, in, regard, in regards to your, I totally understand there's the Ag work group, you know, there's this Meadows work group. So I'm here, I'm representing this group in the Upper Feather River up in Westwood, and that's in Lassen County, so that's a whole other complicated thing. But I don't have anybody else from that basin that's able to go to the Ag work group. So I don't want to not be bringing my concerns of the Meadows up there to this, this dialogue, because I don't think anybody else in the ag group is going to be talking about mountain meadows. You know? So I'm trying to represent the interests of our group, and there's a direct nexus between meadow health and the current use of the land, right? So I, I, I have a hard time not engaging in the ag discussion in regard to the meadows just because that's that's why we're here. You know? And I, do, I don't want to duplicate efforts, and I can't necessarily go to both groups. But maybe I should. Maybe I should instead go to the ag. That might, <laughs> that might be more appropriate for the geographic uh, area that I represent. Well, as I understand it, you can be on more than one work group. Right. Yeah. Sure. So that's, that's also my that, message. Uh, another the thing that I wanted to try to, to, I think that ultimately where this all boils down to, what it all comes to, is funding. And I think that what we're really talking about here are different areas that we could foreseeably pursue funding for, projects that we could pursue funding for. And I think that the more overlap there is when it comes down to the pursuit of available funding, the less uh, the less what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, but the more ineffective or the less effective any of us are going to be if, there, if everybody is applying for funding for the same kind of sign of the project. Actually, the opposite, the intent I, of this would be I the agree. opposite, Jeff, yeah. is that we're collaborating and that we're trying to decrease that competition. The competition. So that by having the overlap, and that's when the integration work group will be great. Nobody's going to steal a project from someone else or do a project somewhere. I mean, again, there's several layers of prioritization that are going to go through, but the overlap is actually meant to empower the region to get projects that if you have several groups that say, wow, this particular area and this problem is really important, that's more powerful. You've got three groups who are putting their ideas together. They're going to put a bang-up proposal together. It's not about competition. The work groups are really, and overlap is actually a good thing, I think, because it allows us to share it. And no one group, I think, you know, the groups are going to have enough, my feeling would be, is that they're going to have enough that you, it's just particular to say this group, that you're going to have enough to chew on, that you're not, you're going to have some peripheral interest in other groups where they overlap. 
but you're proper you're going to have certain projects that really are important to this group and you're going to move them forward and the other groups are going to support you on them but then you're not trying to go and take their project to say oh you can't the idea is really that this is a collaborative effort and that overlap is to look at as a good thing that we're and that's what that integration meeting is all about too is so that the groups can get together and that's where you can talk about you have a particular mountain meadows as a common area or if somewhere else is a common area then any of the groups that have an interest um, you know again the, the process is meant to actually help facilitate and empower our region to get more money up here rather than be competitive so um, okay we can we yes we can um, so <laughs> I'm gonna get a list Bye. out to every um, everyone and um, and we'll go from there. This is going to be something we'll keep talking. And again, projects may help guide what these resource management strategies. At this point, um, our group might be a little bit different than the others. Um, uh, Carl, when he goes to the um, steering committee, the next steering committee meeting, can you know make this this point that we have these definite yeses on these um, management strategies, and we have a few that you know we have question marks about. Um, so, if we don't have resolution by yeah. <laughs> That's January 28th or something. That's January 28th. Right. And your meeting likely is to be, um, and we'll, uh, it will be, <laughs> this is my time, but uh, it will be in February. Uh, Mid February, um, you know what you guys decide on today. So, uh, just to run through um, on the other topics we were going to cover today was to help you tie in. Mm -hmm. Project development is something that's going to be happening. We're going to be identifying projects. Um, how does that process work? And then, um, Kind of end up with what is DWR looking at in terms of projects. So project development is just a it's it's a vehicle to um, for the plan implementation, um, and we're going to be doing the project development and sort of the planning chapters um, one after the other. Um, the uh, the the actual plan that we come up with um, is going to establish targets for projects and it's going to identify projects. Um, you as the work group, as well as tribes and disadvantaged communities and the public are going to be helping to identify those issues. Um, and then one of the next things that we'll be working on is a project solicitation project. How do we go out and solicit projects and, and what does that package look like? Um, Uma right now is actually in the consulting team is working on um, one of the benefits of us going a little bit after, or maybe a lot after everybody else um, in California who's done this, there are a lot of examples for us to um, look at. We can look at different, and Uma has worked with different um, IRW plans, so she can find out what worked and what didn't. There's some that worked real smooth, and she's actually working in order to keep our process you know, moving to, to streamline some of the forms and some of the processes that were a little laborious, if any of you have looked at any of them. There are a few out there that the, even the project solicitation was pretty intense. Um, so she's working on that, that but that will be something we'll be reviewing, um, and then we'll be prioritizing um, those projects. Project eligibility. So it must, um, but this is kind of common sense, but it, it needs to have multiple benefits. Obviously, the more benefits um, in, that you have, and there's a list of elements here, the more that things that we are addressing, and again, this might be where group overlap could empower you if we have projects that are in multiple work groups. Um, we'll be addressing probably, um, you know, we'll have multiple benefits in the region, and that can, um, can make for a stronger um, project. So water supply, reli uh, water supply reliability, water conservation, water use efficiency, um, stormwater capture, storage, cleanup, treatment, management, non-point source pollution reduction, management, monitoring, groundwater recharge, um, management projects, Conveyance of reclaimed water for distribution to users, water banking, exchange, reclamation, improvement of water quality, planning and implementation of, and or implementation of multipurpose flood management programs, and the drinking water treatment distribution. So these are, you know, having a number of these elements in a project will make it stronger. And then here are some of the preferences. Um, directly from DWR. So again, the multiple benefits. Um, is that project effectively integrating our water management with land use planning? Um, and is it resolving significant water-related conflicts within or between regions? Is it addressing statewide priorities? And is it addressing critical water supply or quality needs for um, disadvantaged communities? 
So those are the kinds of things looking down the road that um, are going to make a strong project. And here are the minimum considerations. Um, and it must address a, the, the plan's goals and objectives, so the goals and objectives that are in um, the plan that we were working on um, need to be addressed. How is the project related to the regional um, resource management strategies that um, are selected? Um, technical feasibility of the project, specific benefits to um, disadvantaged communities. Um, and I, actually, I probably don't need to read this whole list. Um, this PowerPoint is going to be um, on the website. But um, and uh, contribution of the project in adapting to effects of climate change. As Randy mentioned, climate change is something we so it's, you know some of these considerations are things that we have to have in there. It's, it's not really dictated by us. They are really things that need to be in there. Um, and all the same is with reducing the greenhouse gases. Um, how to develop a flow chart? We'll be going through the project solicitation. Um, and the project's middle process, they're going to go review and selection. Some of the projects are going to drop out pretty early on. Um, there will be some project prior. Uh, well, we will be doing some project prioritization um, and taking that to the steering committee and then the plan project list. So the projects that are prioritized and chosen will actually be included um, in the final plan. So um, the steps for project development, and there is an, um, you guys do have an example in your packet. We're not going to go over it today, but it does give you an idea of um, project development. It goes into a lot more detail. Um, but we'll, we will establish um, our IRWM goals and objectives. And again, we're playing off of the 2005 plan quite a bit, just updating that. So that's going to help streamline that part of the process. Um, we're going to establish um, a development and review process um, again, um, there's a project solicitation package, and we're hoping to have that to a draft version of that to the steering committee at the January 28th meeting. And then there will be uh, project solicitation hearings. They'll likely be in two different locations. We'll have two meetings, and they'll be in different locations in the um, Feather River region. And that is where we think that a lot more public involvement will probably um, occur too. Um, and then we'll develop ranking and prioritization criteria and then rank and prioritize projects. So not much work for you to do, really. Straightforward, right? I'm just your colleague. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the develop, project development meetings are going to include the two hearings I just, um, just mentioned. And we'll um, also include a workshop, which I mentioned earlier today. Um, and that will be to actually look at that project list before it's included in the plan. And again, that workshop would be something that all of the work groups would attend um, as they wanted to, um, members of them. And we'll also have the work group integration workshop. Um, let's see. So, so maybe it's not known yet, but uh, like the hearing and the decision making. So people maybe are here because they feel strong about this group and somebody else's attending the ag group is there any projects that come forward from this group compared to projects that come forward from another work group how are those looked at or ranked or does it, the manage whatever the steering committee do they decide they're, they're all that well that the um prior to project prioritization um as you know as i understand it we're going to be lumping eventually lumping all the projects together so the projects will all get lumped together and then no criteria. So you guys will probably have recommendations of what projects are a priority for this work group, but then at some point they're going to be thrown into one big pool. And again, that's where it will tease out projects that are have similar um, focus. Have multiple buy-in or whatever. They have multiple buy-in, so like similar focus, together. and then that's going to you know they're going to float to the top. And that prioritization Those will be process. the projects where there's the public hearing or whatever it's called. Right. Well, that's my understanding. The public hearing is to get. Say you well, got involved in any of these work groups, but you got a great project. Mm -hmm. okay. That gets the people that aren't necessarily in the work groups as well. And then maybe, so say, say Joe Johnson from Greenville has a plan, an idea, and he comes to one of these hearings, then maybe he can align with one of the one of the partners or one of the, the signatories yeah. to 
find sponsorship for that project. Yeah, but it's like we don't want to just say if you don't have, if you're not in a work group, you don't get to have any. Yeah. It's only that last one, um, actually, the project prioritization workshop where um, projects will be prioritizing and kind of taking the last look at that list before. That's right at the end. That's at the end. But the first two, um, yeah, the is right. Right. And we'll be going over all of this stuff again, kind of throwing a lot at you today. Um, but it's just to get you immersed this in. This presentation is on the web. So, um, yeah, well, right now, yes, this entire three popcorn, three bag popcorn film will be available within about 24 hours. You can go to that featherriver.org website, like I said, you can click on it and you can watch it. And to your heart's desire, you can speed it up. Do it. <laughs> but the PowerPoint presentation, I can make sure that that's on there if you would like as well. I can well, make sure that. I'd like to have that part. Okay. If nobody else wants to be the same. It's good to have it's, no, I think it would be nice. So I will make sure that that gets put on. Some of the stuff I can read. Okay. And I don't think everybody signed in. There's a lot more people here than there's signatures. Right, and I do want to make sure. Okay. Yeah, there's. All right. Well, so we can get you guys out of here at a reasonable time. Okay, that was fun. Uh, there's a copy of this new packet, and I'm not even be able to read this because I can't read, read it but I'm on this one, but there is a project development timeline, and you can sort of study this at your leisure, but it talks about the, the timeline and what we're expecting to try and get done. The project development manual is what is in your packet, so you can... Um, <coughs> Review that. It has a lot of detail, but it talks about project and proposal development. Um, it has a lot geared towards helping, again, I mentioned this earlier in the day, but uh, disadvantaged communities and stakeholder groups. What do you have? What are your. I'm just waiting. I don't want to be. Disadvantaged communities. What? You, have you identified them in so Lewis County? I mentioned the Because all of Sierra County qualifies. Okay. Um, it, it's all right. And the map that I can pull up, unfortunately, uh -huh. we've had a few little technology or technology glitches here. And, and um, but there is a map, and it was determined by DWR, and it does. You can you go can to pull it. it up. No, oh, I actually that. could pull it up here. Maybe um, <clears throat> as soon as we finish this, I can pull it up in the end. But you can so pull this up at home. Huh? Yeah, yeah. When you can pull, I, I actually have a load on there. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, but I, it's like Quincy, uh, uh, DAC, Wait, Portola. Yeah. Why don't we pull this? Mm -hmm. Just about every time around here is called. Yeah, we're all well, and some that you'd be surprised about. Yeah. Gray Eagle might not. White Hawk yeah. Ranch is the one. White Hawk Ranch. Ranch. <laughs> 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 All right, so now we can do the website. Thank you, Randy. Oh, we got this high tech Macintosh. Um, he will go, and he actually already has the maps here. So there was a description that was on there earlier, but if you just run your cursor over an area, you click on it, it's going to tell you where the region is. So everything that's in yellow on this map is a, is a DAC, has been identified by DWR. Um, so here, for instance, it's Chilkoot Vinton, gives you a population, gives you the median income. It says, is that a DAC? Now, people at the other group Noted some interesting things. The Lake Almanor Country Club is also a DAC. Yeah. So, so, this has to do with running the Yeah. Um, so, this stimulated some discussion. But anyway, so this is on the website. You can go through and look. You can see that there are a number of communities within our region that are considered dis um, disadvantaged communities. Again, that gives you some different funding opportunities. But I think, and Randy, you could correct me if I'm wrong, it sounded like the Mimisal group, there may be some research on the 
part of the consulting team to pool different um, perhaps yeah, sources I found some of these stuff facts. This week I went into the DWR website. Um, there was a PowerPoint presentation. I think I sent it to Uma. And, um, if you could zoom in on Portola. Those dots, but I'm and click on those areas. Okay. Iron Horse. So, um, actually, it, yeah, it's John, it? so that it says it says census place name is Iron Horse. A little bit more, John. So this is Iron Horse. Um, is this the one that you wanted? It's Iron well, Horse. Well, just we didn't think that Portola was a gap. Really. Really? Yeah, well, that was what Robert Nature was saying. Why would it be? No, she was saying. you got to be kidding. Yeah, not Ray Engel. Except when we're Jeffrey. <laughs> Grizzly Road. <Will, laughs> <laughs> <different. laughs> no, not in the city. Yeah, that does not. But the Highlands. Highlands. Yeah, Portola Highlands. A little bit of a new yeah, 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 that little knob in the front. Or some right focus. Right. Well, well, you don't get that stuff. That's a little bit old. That's pretty good right now. So Terry, what's the purple? So the whole, the whole purple is just a, it's not a disadvantaged community. So you can see down here, DWR, it says it's no. Orange, orange is, or orange yellow is a DAC. Well, so Grizzly Creek is not, but Portola probably is. Portola, different parts of Portola. So Portola is yes. Yeah. Backworth is not. Yeah, you need a household. Anyway, I still want to revisit this because there's a table behind it. Uh, but this is what we have at this point. It's interesting that um, disadvantaged communities seem to be defined differently by different state agencies. Um, and this is the DWR definition. Um, there's a recent, uh, whether on the cap and trade through the air, air board, there's a list of disadvantaged communities, but none of them are in, in our area, which is one of the reasons Robert Meacher got so concerned, because their list is different than, uh, than DWR's list. So we're still trying to sort that out. It looks out. like DWR and the regional board does not have that different. <coughs> so we're still trying to sort that out. Um, and we're actually working with community development, too, on trying to sort some of this out because of the, the uh, uh, their issues with uh, HCD and the community block grants. So this is what we have right now. The other thing is, is that we think this was based on the 2010 census up there. It's changed since 2010. This is 2014. And what I saw on the, D, on the DWR website, maybe some consideration of what's the, the, the 2010 is a federal census, but there's an American, something called American something census, um, which by the way has the county below 19,000 people now. Um, so we're still kind of sorting this out a little bit, so be aware of that. Um, but this is what we have at this point. Thanks, Randy. I have kind of an unrelated Thank question. You. This is something that Mr. Coburn was uh, Coburn? Coburn. Coburn. But it's Bill. So. Mr. Coburn was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Bill said, you know, I'm from Sierra County. You don't, you know, and Mountain Meadows Conservancy is in Lassen County, and I just. I've been running into issues with just jurisdiction and stuff, so I'm just curious. I want to verify that the RWM isn't necessarily Plumas County. Project. No, no, it's no, that right. region it's on a, the blue so map. It's the whole region, and we're good. And then another issue is just the Feather River RCD, which I am on the board of. We cover a bunch of Feather River country, but I, it's my understanding that we're a Plumas County bound organization. So I'm curious if, if down the road, if the Feather River RCD could take on some of the projects that we're proposing or at least be involved in the discussion. Because right now, the Honey Lake Valley RCD is kind of, they're in Susanville, and they don't really represent the, the river, but I'm, I've kind of run into some issues 
with politics and with boundaries. So I just want to kind of get a sense of how we can navigate that. Lassen has its own IRWS. There's another IRWS. Yeah, but that's the Han Basin. That's a whole other watershed, you know. So so anyway, I'm just curious because I can't, I don't think the Hawaii Valley Valley RCD is going to be involved with this IRWS process. I don't think so. But we would love to have RCDs involved with Mount Meadows projects, and I've been trying to engage Honey Lake for a long time. So anyway, I maybe just want Honey to Lake could, on. if they're covering part of the watershed, they could be involved. Probably not on the steering committee, but part of the working group. So I just kind of if they're covered, to navigate that. If part of what they cover is within that blue line, they certainly could be involved. Yeah. So. I'll so, so depending on the project, you've got you know the municipals, they'll be involved, you've got the tribes, they'll be involved in another process, and then you have these work groups, which are all open. So, and then when it comes down to having a project sponsor, then you can figure out who you want to partner up with. But it just, I guess I'm curious about the role of the our, our federative RCD and what our boundaries are. So I understand well, that they're bound can, by the Plumas yeah, County kind of Well, I think the Sierra Valley RCD covers both Sierra <coughs> County, portions of Sierra and Plumas well, County. Yeah. So it has to do with the boundaries that establish the resource conservation of this. Yeah, so I, I guess and I don't do know what those research are. Research on that. They're available. But, uh, is it right? Is it a Plumas County boundary? It is a Plumas County, yes. Um, and but but they're right. Sierra Valley RCD does have part of Phoenix County, in it. so that one does cover two counties. And so this actually covers Butte County too, right? It's got part of Lassen. It's got part of Yuba. It's got part of Lassen. It's got part of Hama. Of what? Does it have kids in it, or is it just? Um, it's got. There's eight counties. I think a little bit of Yuba County's in this too. Yuba, Tehama, Tehama, Lassen, Butte. Again, it's basically the watershed for the California water project. So it does cover all that. Eventually, we're going to have to do some interregional outreach. And when we do that, we're going to be looking at that boundary and working with the, the folks in Butte County on the other outreaches. Well, and the other thing to remember is most of those overlap areas are in the national forests. So it'll be working with the Forest Service reps to you know, make sure that the other forests know that they have pieces. It has been suggested that we modify this boundary and take some areas out. And uh, from looking at Sherry Thrall's reaction to that, she wanted it to stay intact as it is for now instead of modifying. Makes sense to have the watershed boundary. Yeah. Great, thank you. We just have a couple more slides. Such a great. Um, so, uh, let's see, like I said, do you have a project development manual? We're not even going to have to go through it today, um, but it does, I think we got stuck on, or not stuck, but um, stopped on um, bullet number two, but um, this is going to, the manual helps you tailor your projects to the IRW program, and again, it, was, it has some really useful tools for helping um, entities and organizations that don't have the capacity or haven't done a lot of grant writing that, you know, step them through it too. So, and again, remembering that the plan is not just about getting funds um, from Prop 84 or the following proposition, um, but also to help us develop projects for the region that could be just you know, put out for other funding opportunities. So again, um, thinking about that and thinking beyond just um, IRWM when you're doing the project development. <laughs> So the next steps um, is a call for studies. So one of the things that we're really reaching out to everyone um, about is to get, um, like for instance in the municipal group, they, they have a lot of data that they're collecting all the time as a municipal group, these community services districts and stuff. They've got a lot of information that they you know, have to as an entity collect and they, um, you know, that's the kinds of stuff they're going to be putting in as some data and information. But this group, there's a lot of information here. It may be four service studies. It may be studies that other groups have done. And a lot of that is already out there. But if your group or organization, or you know, particularly stuff that's post-2005, um, because a lot of the studies were included in the 2005 update or planning process. But, um, but anything since then, it's been about 10 years. So um, any studies or information, you can just send us via email. We'll get it on the website. It's to develop that baseline. You know, part of the plan that the consulting team is going to be doing, so they're trying to pull in all the information they can about the area and, and data and information. 
um, scientific reports, whatever, so they can put that all together um, and tie that all together with some of the things that our projects are going to come out of this. Um, and again, there's some examples there, groundwater management plans, water supply assessment, um, capital improvement plans, you know, apply to us. but for us, this group would probably be a lot of scientific studies. But, um, and some groups in the region have already done a lot. Up in Almanor, there's quite a few studies and stuff that are available um, that share water quality data and various things that are going on there. Those are perfect examples of things to... So if those are things you can just submit to us anytime. If you run across something and you think it's relevant or important, shoot it our way. And then again, this is going to be added to a database on a map where you're going to be able to look at that region and it's going to have a call out box and you're going to be able to see what is the data and information available in that area. So you can click on Lake Albemarle and there's going to be a list of um, information. If I'm right about that, I think, Paul? Yep. Is that the, the goal, is to be able, so that you're going to be able to be right there. See, and, and it will help us identify areas if we do need more um, information in some areas, possibly. Is the information that was produced by Adwax on the county thing or is whenever we divorced ourselves if we scrub it? Uh, I don't know. I have I've it. submitted a couple of things from the Almanor region to the group, and I think that I've got one of the outright reports for sure that we was to be similar. I've sent a couple of to the group. But if you have, that's a perfect example. If you have copies of those, send, send them to me if you want. Um, I'll mail it to you. You make me do more work like Sandy? Just like the old days. Uh, and then uh, again, here's a, another wow. I know. Um, plan. Okay, you have a copy of this. I am not going to go over, but basically, what this helps you do is tie the top tier is what is anticipated that the regional um, management work, um, water management group is working on the steering committee based you know, for each of the meetings. So they're up to meeting number three. Under that is the things that they anticipate dealing with at that meeting, and then you can go straight down, and that sort of sets up what does the work group need to be helping to provide so that they can make those decisions at those meetings. Obviously, this will change a little bit in uh, May over time. There has been talk of trying to accelerate the process. That'll just we'll have to see how that goes. Right now, it's sort of slated to be about a two-year process. So, this brings us to the next meetings and. Um, deciding your next meeting. Um, the next management committee meeting is January 28th. It will be here. Um, and the next thing would be for you guys to decide mid February would probably be about a good time. Right now, municipal is scheduled to be February 19th, Thursday. So probably targeting something around that time frame, either towards the end of February. Um, I would like to point Friday. It's what works for you guys. For me, I have to, I will make it work. <laughs> oh no no, we want to set a date today. So well, I think Fridays work good for me. Fridays. And and then the other thing to can to, to think about is municipal was able. They have a smaller group of people. I think their issues are a little bit more defined. This group. I think we can see the complexity with some of the issues and, the, and all the different faucets of this group and what it covers. Two hours may not be enough, That's been, and this is entirely up to you, but if you guys want to plan, today we took three hours, whether you want that to all be before lunch, all after lunch, do you want it to span lunch? Um, that's maybe some, I, you know, a, a three to four hour meeting might be, I know that sounds horrible, but it might be more what you guys might be looking at, depending on how efficient you are in your meetings. It, really is up to you. So deciding what that meeting time is on the 20th, whether you want to, or do an afternoon meeting. Is there any possibility of having the meeting earlier? If that's what's desirable for you, I, I'm not sure too much earlier. Like, any time after the 9th? The 9th is a I mean, after that. So I'm saying after that. Yeah, after 10th. With that. If Fridays work for people, the 13th, 20th, or 27th. Not the 20th. Not the 20th? So how does the 13th sound? Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, yeah, we have a little spooky lunch party. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do you want to start it at noon or one and then let it go? One? Okay. Is that 
Does everyone agree with 1 p.m. on Friday the 13th, February 13th? 1 p.m.? I realize there's a huge packet of stuff here. If there's anything you're wanting us to try to read to digest, can we have it before? Oh, yeah. And next time, you know, to maybe expedite some of the... Right. And the only thing, the reason this time this was just to get the group, I used to have my email list. I am not sure everybody wanted to be clogged with how they've gotten some nasty emails. You can't make the 13th, Carl? I should have. The reason why I hesitated about even putting my name out for chair was that I'm going in for a hip replacement on the 11th. So I was asking to have it to be before then because I'll be recovered in time for the next meeting, but I don't know. Not for February. Can Cindy, are you going to put back Cindy? But no, she's going to... Our alternate? Cindy, you're available. I got it on the cheek. I got it. You already talked to her. Yeah, I 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 talked to her
education and outreach must be, because that's one of the objectives of that. So. Julie? And have you had discussions about, I mean, I'm thinking that anyone in this group is floodplains, meadows, and water bodies, so that includes flowing water, and this whole specter of uh, train cars coming down the canyon and potential pollution. Um, if there's some nexus that we could work on with that, too, having seen the corn still. <laughs> Are we going to grow corn in the canyon next year? Be some big fish. Hopefully, it won't grow corn fed. Corn fed fish. <laughs> corn fed fish. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, the water can get pretty warm in that. Uh, well, once we get those thermal currents, the baby's going to be nice cold water. I think the wreck is before. The wreck is the east branch. The east branch um, actually contributes quite a bit of warm water to the system. So that wreck is above the confluence with the north. January 28th, a meeting for this group. No. It's the steering committee meeting. So January 28th, 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 January 28th,
request. Now, one thing that I think the steering group is looking at is this goes beyond the Prop 84 funding and even beyond maybe the recent bond funding, that this is a living organism that moves into the future. That's one of the things that the makeup of the steering group really provides for is an ongoing into the future water group that looks at the issues 10, 20 years from now. So you're not really limited. But the county, the Prop 50 grants with the county, I'm not quite sure ever why, instead of the flood district, has a number of projects. And it was funded way back when, $7 million in grant funding for over $8 million of projects in that. So it is possible to bundle them and get them, but I think you're right. You get picked apart for the individual elements. We got them eventually, but they denied it first, and then we had to go back and redo it all. That was the whole IRWM had to do that. So I want to kind of try to address something that Randy Hawley and Mr. Bill said. Have we only known each other all of our lives? Occasionally I forget things. And then really the question is for Todd, I suppose, maybe. Randy suggested that projects could be studies or feasibility studies. It seemed like, Bill, you're kind of indicating that studies probably won't fly. And I guess so my question for Todd would be, what's your position on that? Wouldn't the DWR kind of want to have some backup that their problem exists? I mean, it would seem to me that there has to be some sort of study or data that proves a problem before DWR would. So I guess the question is, would DWR be inclined to fund studies? That one I can't. I might have to give a little background because I'm not the IRWM expert by any means at all. We have specific staff in our office that do that. I'm here because of other involvement in the meadows and everything else and have an interest there. Part of this is implementation. I know DWR really wants to see things on the ground. And where the initial legwork of a project is done and it's something that the IRWM can basically get some proposal to construction done, that is a focus. Whether it would fund studies, I can't. I would have to go back to my office and ask about that. Maybe that's something I'll talk with our IRWM expert and provide some feedback. Because that's a question. I don't want to get the wrong response here. When I mentioned study, I wasn't particularly thinking of DWR as the funder. It could be the counties get together and the boards throw a little money in to do a study because they've determined through this process that there's something. Or the RCD has some money or there's another grant opportunity. So I'm trying to keep DWR's funding and those sources in your sites, but recognizing that this whole process can open up other avenues of funding that were not just limited to DWR. So when you write a grant, if you don't get sufficient background on the information that's in the need and justification, it's going to get automatically shot down before it gets through anybody. Then you're getting to the problem. What is an eligible grant? The purpose of the plan is to have all the projects that are of importance. And then as studies or opportunities come up, then these projects get shoveled towards the right opportunity. But this is our chance to look at everyone's needs. Some will be studies or how do you manage municipal services needs for audits for all the little ones. You know, water masters, you know, all that kind of stuff is the things that we can look at. And then IRWM is really specific and another grant fund is really specific. That's the way it works. Good. Thank you. 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 Th
Okay, great. Everybody, I know there's some of you who need to get going or spent and given up your time today. We appreciate it. Hope you're not scared away. Come back. Um, send me requests for food. I'll make sure I have your favorite thing here. If that's what it takes to entice you, I will do that. <laughs> um, and there is plenty of food back here. Take some of the road if you're going. But again, thank you again for your participation and look forward to working with you. I know there's some people who weren't able to come today, so we will have some additional folks I know at the next meeting um, for sure. So, um, and those of you who want to linger or draw on the map or hang out, whatever, you're welcome. But those that just keep going, I'll put it just That's what I'm very That's very sensitive. And that's why we got the other thing from that. The food? Decision making by the board. My treat. They won't pay for food.